John Ford DMC 1500 H and if you find you ever have this happen strip the belt strip the teeth off or break it this little video is to help you change out belt make it a little easier for you maybe give you some pointers if you've never done it before uh, but if you have some uh, helpful ideas something that's worked good for you please share it in the comments and uh, if I actually put something down that's uh, not correct and you have a better way also share that in the comments as well uh, thanks for watching this video changing belts on a Johnford uh, DMC series this is a 1500 H uh, good thing to uh, do is uh, match mark all your hoses if you can I use uh, colored tie wraps you can do different things and uh, that's just always a uh, something nice if you can also paint marks so you can line things back up well that's always good too uh, those will be the first things you'll take off when it comes time for disassembly You'll uh, take off this line and uh, put some uh, plugs on them, some different cap plugs or whatever, cap them off, take off the hoses, you'll see in here, here, down here, and uh, we'll have uh, switches right there for uh, your uh, raise lower draw bar those will be some of the things you'll start out doing I uh, still so got the cap plugs on I've got zip ties match marking uh, the hose colors which you can see makes it easier for disassembly reassembly that green matches that one and just uh, before I take it apart I measure try to keep the, the distance the same when you put it back together and this happens to be eight millimeter this will keep your uh, draw bar settings the same. Just a little pointer. This is a uh, left hand thread to uh, raise this plate so you can tighten that set screw right there.
the shop's a little quieter now, so I'll do a little video. We're moving the belt from broken belt from the spindle on this Johnford DMC 1500H. And uh, we're down to taking the tank off. We'll take these three bolts off here, come around to the other side, and you're going to have. Three more bolts on this side, they'll be counter sunk. And then you'll take the tank off and you'll just set it back there on the bed. You also have to remove this hose. Here's the reason uh, the belt's getting changed. It shredded uh, a bunch of the teeth off. Back the other end, you can see them. And they were stuck into the pulley but what I'm going to do next is uh, we're going to take loose that bolt right there this one right here that bolt right there and this guy back here once those are loose we'll take this bracket loose and that will allow you to slide it back so you can get the belt on. But if you don't reset your adjuster right there, you'll be able to uh, tighten it right back up to the original position. If you decide to do it differently, take a measurement from here to here. That way you can get your belt tension right back to where it originally was. Once you have that belt slipped over the pulley and you tighten this back up to its original position so you're back to the same tension you had before, then you go ahead and tighten the bolts up for the motor. Make sure you get all those tight. And then you want to clean your belt area and your bearing and uh, start reassembling that area as well as uh, putting your uh, tank back on and filling it up. To put the bearings back in, I uh, put some nuts underneath to help support the cage and then you can put the, the bearings in using a uh, Kluber grease, uh, spindle grease. So. Uh, Gives you a little uh, idea, the best way, or my the way I use, probably not the best way, but to uh, put the spindle bearings in. And of course, you want to remove those little uh, uh, nuts before you put the next piece in. This uh, next piece I'm putting on, make sure you take it apart and uh, clean. It's got a little spring in there, you can kind of see it. So this can move up and down so that brace can float just a little bit that's just a little pointer a little tip put uh, this plate in and then i threaded this nut down and uh, tighten it up with a punch or a chisel it's actually a special one it's got flat on the end so it lays right into those grooves next we'll tighten up the set screws and we'll be ready for the next part. This is a uh, left hand threads. So you'll have to tighten it uh, by going backwards. And it also, uh, before you tighten all these bolts up in here, you'll have to uh, raise this plate so you can tighten that set screw right there. This is 
tight. Like I said, it's left hand thread. The inside ones are all tightened up. That set screws tight underneath. These are shoulder bolts, so you just tighten them up as well. You don't really have to worry about checking the spring heights. And then uh, we'll be ready for that uh, next plate that sits here on top. Next piece to go in will be this top plate. And I leave one stud out so you can get the hydraulic unit back in to actuate the draw bar. And I still have to put the, the bolts in and tighten them up. I've got the hydraulic unit in. Uh, I still got the cap plugs on. I've got zip ties match marking uh, the hose colors, which you can see. Makes it easier for disassembly, reassembly. That green matches that one. And just uh, before I take it apart, I measure, try to keep the, the distance the same when you put it back together. And this happens to be eight millimeter. This will keep your uh, draw bar settings the same. Just a little pointer. And I still need to hook up the sensors. And I did put uh, that one back in, which I took out to uh, disassemble. belt we use that we've had the best luck with on our John Furts are these uh, RPP Golds. Uh, we've had them last over four years. And the part number, as you can see here, and I also put a link, uh, link to uh, the Amazon uh, that you can order it from.